Hi all, welcome to Geologic Concepts. In the continuation of the last video, we are going to discuss the remaining questions. The first question is this one, 84th. Which two, which two competing effects determine the size of a star? So actually to understand this question, you need to understand the, the birth, birth cycle of the life cycle of a star. Actually a star forms when a dust collects at a place like this is the birth of a star this so then it it starts growing so the for the growth the energy that it gets from the thing which is called fusion nuclear fusion right the same thing that happens in the sun so the same pro through the same process a star also gets energy but actually in fusion the hydrogen molecules are consumed and helium molecules are formed once this hydrogen molecules is exhausted the star goes through i mean the star gets older and it dies finally so the death of a star is inevitable once the hydrogen molecules are exhausted so after once the death is i mean the old age is the life cycle of the star nears completion the size of a star has grown by the time into a huge a giant body so because of that body and mass the the gravitational pull attracts the body of the whole body of the star and it finally collapses because there is no force to keep it expanding so the nuclear force nuclear fusion that was going on which which ceases now and which has ceased now actually and gravitational pull has overcome the nuclear fusion reaction and then it collapses so this is how the star the life cycle of a star is so here if we go through the options we will find that here you will find that the nuclear fusion and gravitational effects these are the competing effects that determine the size of a star the next is the characteristic of gravitational waves that make them difficult to detect so the characteristics actually this is talking about the characteristics so here you if you look into the gravitational fo field you must have heard the hadron collider large hadron collider right LIGO experiment all these are related to the gravitational fields so to, to detect the gravitational field is very tough because the fields gravitational field is quite weak weak means it carries very low energy low energy right and the wavelength i mean the frequency is quite low so if the frequency is quite low the wavelength is very very large for example if i tell you the the normal i mean the average length wavelength of a gravitational field is 6 lakh kilometer 6 lakhs kilometer so this is what the wavelength is or to give you an a context wavelength is suppose this is the axis i mean the, the direction in which a wave proceeds so if this is the wave how is represented so this point and this point the distance between these two points is called wavelength the length is wavelength and one single wave is consists of numerous like infinite number of such waves right ups and downs and ups and downs so you can understand the here you can understand the length and width of i mean the dimension of our universe because the wavelength distance between these two points is quite large so for all these reasons the detection of a wavelength detection of a gravitational field becomes a really a tough task so for this you need to for i mean through this you can understand that it's very difficult to uh, de detect a gravitational field so short wavelength no high energy no low energy low long wavelength yes low energy and long wavelength is a reason behind this moving to the next question 86 which one of the following statements is true about the appearance of color of the sun in the sky the sunset or sunrise okay this question talks about the color of the sun in the sky and to deal with the question we will go to, through the uh, options 
Here the uh, first option says uh, at sunset sunlight travels more distance in the atmosphere and higher frequency radiation scatter away resulting this okay it talks about long distance travels through uh, during sunset light travels long distance at, and uh, higher frequency radiation scatter away resulting into red okay let's move to the next option at sunset or sunrise sunrise sunlight travels least distance which is wrong at noon sunlight travels least distance in atmosphere which is again wrong uh, how i'll tell you at noon sunlight travels least distance in the atmosphere again this is wrong so only option uh, correct is, remaining correct is a so let's let's see suppose this is earth this is our earth right and uh, one person standing here so his line of vision is up to this point only if sun sets beyond this sun goes beyond this point beyond this line this person will not be able to see the sun right so this is the horizon for this is the horizon for this person standing here now understand if the sun is here that means the light needs to travel from this place to this place if sun is overhead overhead here so here again the light has to travel only this much distance so distance obviously increases right once the distance increases what happens is sunlight has to go through lot of i mean a long atmosphere right because all this part is filled with atmosphere so through this the light has to travel this much distance and through traveling what happens is sunlight scatters so the higher the frequency larger the scattering lower the frequency lower the scattering so red color has the lower frequency and violet color has the highest frequency so the uh, red color will be scattered the least that's why red color reaches us and sun appears to us as red so this is the reason why sun appears red while setting or sunrise moving to next question the appearance of a rainbow in the sky is see the rainbow in the sky rainbow happens because sunlight suppose there is sunlight and the rainy season is there so the all the sunlight falls on the droplets water droplets so this is water droplet right and what happens in rainy season during rainy season is the whole atmosphere is filled with such water droplets because of the high moisture and monsoon so the sunlight has to travel through all these water droplets and inside the water droplets happens is reflection and refraction so the refraction and reflection is the reason why uh, rainbow rainbow happens so let's go to the options diffraction is not the reason total internal reflection is not the reason refraction is the reason total internal reflection again is not the reason so see should be the answer on a very hot day uh we often see shimmering wave lines near the ground it is due to so what happens is suppose during hot days ground heats up right so ground is hot now and this loses energy in the form of waves so this heat will heat up the water water vapor or the air molecules here because these air molecules are now heated up they will start moving i mean there will be chaos in the their arrangement so this is the reason why this wavy and shimmering lines you can see above hot objects like when uh, when a fire is burning like coal fire or like anything anything of that sort so uh, if you look at that place the, uh, the where the fire is you will see that there is a wavy shimmering structure i mean you will see that waves are there so this is because of this reason so why this happens this in refractive index keep on changing because the the structure of i mean the structure of the medium the this arrangement of molecules in the medium keeps on changing because of this high temperature the high temperature gives a lot of energy to the molecules of the air or water vapor and this keeps on changing the in refractive index so the refraction is the reason why this you feel this uh, sh shimmering and wavy uh, thing so refraction of light is the answer 
Which of the following is the conservation of law from which the equation of continuity of fluid? So, equation of continuity. So, what is continuity? First of all, you need to understand that in fluid mechanics, if there is a pipe, I think you all and we all must have seen this thing. Suppose there is a tap here and there is a pipe and you have to wash your bike, right? So what you do is you hold the pipe here and you try to squeeze its outlet so what you're doing is you are narrowing down the outlet area cross-sectional area here and this way the, the water speed increases right and you can easily wash off your uh, bike what happens is the amount of water in enters here per second or per unit time must be released at the same time I mean during suppose in one second 5 kg of water or 5 liters of water entered through this pipe here also in one second 5 liters of water has to uh, come out for this reason the speed changes here because the area of uh, cross section is larger so speed is going to be smaller but here the area of cross section as you have pressed it it, it decreases area cross section decreases so the speed of the water outlet increases so that that's why this thing happens so this is what uh, is called the continuity equation of continuity in the context of fluids so this is depend this depends on the conservation of mass right then okay moving to the next question with reference to the electron drift speed okay electron drift speed is suppose there is a conductor right there is a conductor the conductor is made up filled with lot of free electrons lot of free electrons numerous like you cannot even count them this much free electrons are there the moment you apply an electric field here the electrons keep will electrons will keep on moving in the opposite direction because of their negative charge so this is how the electrons move but but the moment you switch on some ele uh, electric field and or in the real life you can see that the moment we press the uh, uh, switch light comes right the your bulb glows right so does that mean that the electron which which was at the, at the switch moves to the bulb in that fraction of second no that electron does not move that electron moves only very little distance only this much but this much distance has been moved i mean, I mean all the electrons moved moves this much <coughs> all the electron moves this much distance and that's why the the elect this the electron is placed here will move this much distance and the electron moves here will move this much distance sorry opposite electron will move in the this direction this direction move in the this direction and current will follow in the this direction so this is how electron moves in the drift velocity but the average speed of an electron in suppose an atom suppose this is nucleus and electrons are moving in an orbit right here the average speed is very high very very high so the average speed of electron is far more than the average I mean the drift velocity so here you can see that it is much lesser than the average electron speed no much more than the average no drift speed is much lesser than it is much lesser than the average electron speed which is B so B is true which one of the following is greenhouse gas man-made see carbon dioxide is already in the nature methane is already in the nature nitrous oxide is already in the nature only carbon chlorofluorocarbon we have added so this is going to be answer going to be your answer which one of the following colors of the visible spectrum is least see when a plant absorbs sunlight it reflects some and some are gets absorbed some are get absorbed so what happens suppose a plant is there there is a leaf this is the a leaf right so what happens is it absorbs a lot of colors which also reflects some color so actually the green leaves looks you I mean uh, I mean we see the leaves as green because the green light is reflected by the plants the leaves so the green light is 
if the green light is reflected that means green light is the light is the color that is absorbed the least so green should be the answer here the refractive index of a prism made of flint glass is this question is suppose there is a prism right and uh, it's like this suppose this is a white light fine so what happens is lot of colors are violet b i the the spectrum becomes is be, becomes like this b i b g y o r right here it is red here it is violet so the frequency of violet is highest and the frequency of red is lowest you see here the frequency the the color which has most frequency the highest frequency will get reflect, deflected the most so i mean inside the prism when a light light ray passes through a prism it deflects the prism deflects the light different colors through different angles this is the reason why different i mean the reason behind is this the different colors have different frequencies so prism acts at prism acts differently for different frequencies so the higher the frequency higher the deflection so if we come to the the same for all wavelengths which is wrong higher for red light and than for violet which is also wrong because the deflection for red light is least higher for violet light than for the red light so c should be the answer what happens to a bar magnet when it is heated what happens is when you heat some actually suppose there is a bar magnet so according to physics all the magnets have magnetic moments or the magnetic domains or they all are aligned like north south 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 see the the alignment is very a uh, very orderly right but when you heat it up you provide some heat this alignment gets disturbed there is chaos inside this bar magnet and once this alignment gets dis disturbed the magnetism is now lost or maybe reversed or reduced not reversed reduced because th because of this uh, misalignment or this uh, re disarrangement so the correct answer should be its magnetism either reduced or lost moving to the next question okay so this way we have completed the uh, uh, paper of 2022 and in the next section in the next video we will move to the paper of 2020 yes paper from the year 2020 that too will cover in that too will cover the science portion only and after the once we have covered the science we will go uh, we will move to a different section thank you for watching